So it's still day 21 of our shoulda, woulda, coulda been freedom day, so I'm still celebrating the fact that we coulda, shoulda, woulda. But I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do burgers tomorrow. So meat burgers, and I'm gonna do uh, vegetarian broccoli burgers tomorrow. So in order to prepare for that, I need to do some bread rolls. So I'm gonna show you my sourdough bread rolls and I'm gonna do a loaf of sourdough at the same time. Let me show you the starter first. Okay, this is a sourdough starter. Come have a look. I've just got a fabric food cover over this. And if you can see the bubbles, I have just given it a bit of a stir to wake it up. But this is a very simple starter. Um, I use equal quantities of flour and water. Mix it with a, my hands being clean to start off with. Because you've got wild yeast on your hands. And you mix that together. And then every day, the, you're supposed to throw some away and then throw a quarter of it away and then and, and then do it. You know, I don't do that because we're in lockdown and I'm not throwing anything away. So I've just been adding equal quantities of flour every day. And some days I even skip and it's fine. Now I'm, I'm using a whisk because it, it is attracting wild yeast from the air. So it's already used the wild yeast from my hand to get going. And I am now going to use this as my yeast leavener for my bread. So I'm going to use about um, 100 mils, 125 mils, half a cup of, of starter, maybe a smidge more. Yeah, actually I'm going to use double. So I'm doing a, a cup of the starter, right? And then I'm going to put my flour on top of that. That's one cup. Two cups. Two and a half. Three. Uh, let me do a little bit more. So I'm going to do four cups. This is white bread flour. Okay, so I put it on top of the starter because yeast and salt don't get on at all. Salt kills yeast. And this is a very delicate wild yeast. So the salt that I'm going to put in, it's probably about a full teaspoon, I'm going to put on top. So I'm going to put a bit more on. So that's probably about two teaspoons of salt right there. And then I'm just going to give it a little mix through to the flour. I'm going to get some water. Okay, so I'm going to start by mixing this liquid starter first. And then I'm just going to add some water. You can put some oil in if you want to at this stage, but I, I'm just going to do a, a really simple sourdough bread because most people will have these basics and we can now buy flour again. If you want to do a normal bread without it being a sourdough, you can, yeast is now available in the shop, so obviously people are not making booze as frantically as they were. Um, so you'd use, for about four cups of flour, uh, one sachet of the instant yeast and some salt. I don't ever put sugar in my bread. I don't think it's necessary. If I want to check that the yeast is active and want to bloom it in water first, then I, I literally sprinkle a little bit of sugar on there because that is food for yeast. But then so is flour. Let that bloom, add it, and then I would, for a normal bread, I would add about two tablespoons of olive oil. And then enough water to make a nice dough. 
So let me get rid of that. Pull my bracelets up. And then I'm just going to give it a start kneading it in the bowl so that I can check the water content and see if I need to add some more before I start kneading on, on my counter surface. Okay. I'm going to try not to add too much flour because water content in bread gives you a nicer crumb. So I'm just going to do some kneading here. By kneading like this, what you're doing is you are stretching the glutens and then you get a much, that's when you sort of see the like almost strings in bread. That's why you should be using bread flour and not cake flour or plain flour if possible for, especially for something like a sourdough. You can also add rye flour to this which is really nice. That's one of my favorite things to do actually. Now sourdough takes hours to rise if you're using a natural sourdough starter. A lot of people cheat and then they add a little bit of um, dried yeast to their sourdough starter. That is not sourdough. Sourdough is like grayish color almost, quite a dense crumb and I'm not a bread expert but it's just a different animal altogether and I really don't think people should cheat. So now you've got this beautiful satiny uh, feeling of on the on the dough and although it was quite sticky to start off with by working it like this you're starting to get a really nice elastic dough and in fact when you do this when you start seeing it stretch like that then you know that the glutens are being worked and that your kneading is doing its thing. It is work to do, but it actually is really important. I mean, there are a lot of breads that say no need this and no need that, and they're actually fine. But sometimes for something like this, it's quite a good thing to do. Okay, so this is gonna take ages to rise, to prove. So I'm going to now See, this is lovely and elastic and soft. I'm going to now put it in the bowl to rise, probably overnight, actually. So I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in here. Because if you don't lubricate this with olive oil or cover it really well, then what happens is usually it gets like a hard skin around it. And it prevents the blossoming and proving of it. I'm just going to rub it like in oil around it like that. And this, this is quite nice because it, the lid seals. So it gives it plenty of time to prove. Then I'm just going to leave it. And then tomorrow morning bake a couple of rolls and a loaf of sourdough. But then it's going to need to prove again tomorrow when I punch it down and make it into rolls. So that's it for today. We will see you again tomorrow. Um, hi, it's early in the morning. Um, I just want to quickly show you how to do the, the bread. Uh, I've got a sourdough basket, which I'm thinking might be too big for the amount of dough that's going to be left over after doing rolls. Um, so I might end up using my colander, which is a great thing for you to use if you don't have a, a sourdough basket. You put a clean tea towel in there, you put lots of flour on there, and then it will still give you sort of vague marks on the bread which gives you that sourdough feel. So we'll see how we go. Let's have a look at the dough in the meantime. See it's beautifully risen. Ordinarily I wouldn't use oil um, around the, the dough but because it, I left it overnight um, I didn't want it to have a hard sort of horrible cracky thing. So you're going to punch it down like that and we're just going to give it a quick knead. Try not to incorporate any more flour into it. 
The amount of oil will be negligible, so it's not really an issue. Beautifully elastic now at this stage. So we're bashing all the air out of it, and then we're going to let it rise again. about this much off Let's see. I'm gonna flour the pan very well because the bread I'm going to, the rolls I'm going to put on here to prove again and then I'm going to put the bread inside one of these to prove but then I will eventually put this on here as well so at this stage there's no more oil or anything that goes on it so I'm just going to do two rolls okay leave those to prove and I'll bake probably end up baking these before I do the bread anyway so we'll see now I'll cover them in flour Let's have a look. I think it's a try because it's worth it to see the beautiful lines that you get on here. Very well floured basket and even if you use the colander with the tea towel, it needs to be well floured. Otherwise it is not going to come out easily at all, which is the most frustrating thing. Because the length of time it's taken you to make it and for it to, the hours it's taken for it to rise and then when you take it out and it sticks, it deflates and then the whole thing is just a mess. So, well floured. Let's try with this amount of dough. Yeah, that should be okay. So then we're going to flour the top as well. And on the side, so when it grows, that's where it's going to be. Right. Then I'm going to cover it with this tea towel. And let that rise. And these I'm just going to pop in the oven to rise. They're undisturbed. And then we will check on it later. Okay. This has been rising now in here from since from seven o'clock in the morning. It's now twenty to one. Um, I had to bake the rolls, which are here, as you can see, sourdough rolls. So now I am going to transfer this to here and hope that it comes out easily. Oh, wonderful, it has. Okay, so there you go. If you have floured it really well, you will see it will come out that easily, and you have got. The lovely lines on here. So what is typical of sourdough is to slice it. It's still going to rise in the oven and then you have this beautiful sourdough look. The oven is really hot, it's about 200 to 20 thereabouts, even hotter sometimes. And I've put a tray of water which is going to create steam which gives it that lovely crust. So I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm just going to let the oven become hot enough. So these are the rolls. I got impatient waiting for them to rise, and I put them in a cold oven hoping that they would rise a little bit more. So they have, um, which is why they've got this mushroom effect. As you can see, the slashes have opened up a little bit, which is really nice. Now we're going to put it into the oven because the oven is now hot enough. I'm going to give it about 35, 40 minutes and then see where we go from there. Right, you heard the timer go off. Uh, that means the bread is probably ready. Let's have a look at it. So there's the sourdough. It's nice, crisp. Let's check the bottom. Ouch. That's what you want to hear, that hot sound. So we've got a really lovely crisp um, shell, which is what a sourdough should have. Um, 
and that's because it was at high heat with the water steam at the bottom. So we'll leave this now to cool and cut into it and have a look at it. There are the rolls um, and then here's the bread. So we'll see you then. Bye.